So for three, mm -hmm. so the first thing, like you want to shade in where you're actually doing it. Right, that you're working on. Right. But so when you first get that G of X, do you type it in in the Y and the Y one like you would on the first one? No, this is different. Um, if uh, this one you don't really need a calculator for, um, you're just um, uh, yeah, you're just um, <clears throat> building out your three definitions that you need. You need a, a definition for G, you need a definition for G prime, and you need a definition for G double prime. Mm -hmm. So in other words, this notation is indicating that we are sitting a level above F. OK, and if we're sitting at a level above F, that means if we took the derivative of something above F, then we're going to get back down to F. And then if we go down another level, we're going to get to F prime. Yeah. It's just that we have this notation to indicate what G of X is. G is sitting above F. That means G prime is F, which means G double prime is F prime. Okay. Yeah. Definition. Once you're here, then you're either doing one of three things. You're either gathering area, looking at the graph itself in terms of the Y value, or looking at the slope. Yeah, and then we can um, we can get a head start with um, three, four, and five if we want to. All right. Oh, and I want to, um, I'll show this in class as well, but do you remember when we were uh, doing number six and um, we were trying to figure out what could be a good window for us to do? Let's try that again. So under number six, we had this, or sine of x squared minus 2x plus 2. So go ahead and enter that in. Okay, good. And then do zoom 6, because zoom 6 is, you know, normally um, you're not going to get, you're not going to be told where to set your windows. So if we do zoom 6, that kind of gives you a starting point for your graph. I mean, it's not very good, but at least you see between 0 and 4, which prefer to zoom in a bit, right? So what we can do is we can actually draw a box around that region. And not have to worry so much about okay, what is the what is the left and right end point of my window? So um, so if you go to zoom, there's a couple of features here. There's zoom in and zoom out. These are not as useful because if you zoom in, it doesn't quite zoom in and sometimes where you want to zoom in. Zoom out sometimes is more useful because you can kind of it'll it'll just make everything um, out. You kind of see where you want to focus on. But the, the idea that the thing that's going to really help us is this Z box here. If you click Z box. show you what uh, what zbox is doing so if you hit enter on zbox what's going to happen is let me draw a picture of it so you can see here so this whole thing is let's say you want to zoom in on this section right so you're going to do is you're going to move your um cursor to the upper left corner of where you think you want your box to sit okay and then you're going to hit enter here. And then you're not going to hit enter until you see the box draw out. So you're going to use your arrow button and then you're going to go as far right as you want and then as far down as you want. And then once you see the box form, you're going to hit enter again and it's going to zoom in on just that set. So. So that's nice. Um, zoom box. Um, so sometimes you may have to kind of scroll to see where that blinking cursor is. And then once you hit enter, sometimes students want to hit enter before they see the box. So make sure you see the box first before you hit enter. Yeah, so that's nice. And then you're good with finding X intercept. Yeah, the yeah. second trace, yeah, up and down. Okay. And then the same thing applies. I, it may not show up on the test, but if you want to find a relative max, 
let's say you want to find the, the peak at that point, you can do second trace maximum. And then you can just pick a point to the left of the peak, scroll over, pick a point to the right of the peak, and then hit enter again. Calculate what will look for that peak that you're looking for. Could you do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, oh uh, yeah, we don't. It, it's not asking for it for number six, but okay. kind of. Well, but we skipped it. Part H. Part H says find the time when the object reaches minimum velocity. So we would actually um, look to see where that lowest y value is. So we'll do um, second trace minimum, pick points on either side of the relative minimum, and then it's going to find that relative minimum for us. You could, can you or can you not do that on? 3D. Well, I guess it's no calculator. Yeah. Well, we don't need, yeah, we don't need a calculator. Okay. We just look at the graph and tell. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at number page three. Okay. So this is back to something that looks like number three before. Okay, so we have um G of X. Let's go ahead and build out everything that we need because if you look, it does ask eventually for G prime and G double prime. So Yeah. Double prime is just Okay, so um, let's go ahead and shade in so we make sure we know what we're ultimately working with between the graph and the x axis. Doesn't it give us like an interval? Can we just assume that it goes to the end of what it has? Uh, like if it doesn't say like negative five to seven, we just assume that it's the first and last number to do Uh, what do you mean negative five to seven? Like yeah, on the other on the other ones, where it'd be like from negative five to seven, but it really goes. Oh oh oh. Um, that's possible. You're right. So I just want to shade in, make sure that if we want to do anything between these regions, it's all it's just going to be this region. It, we we may not use all of it but we don't want to be looking at other parts of the graph. Yeah, okay, that's all the shading is for. Okay, so then find G of negative two. So G of two, so we use the first definition, right? Is it a function for this, or do you just find the area? Yeah, just the area, right? Just the area. These are nice geometric shapes. Um, if they if these were not nice geometric shapes, then we'll need more information from F to, mm -hmm. so we can actually do power rule or whatever. Um, let's see. So this is uh, we want to follow the, what definition says, right? So from negative two to two. And I'm just going to go ahead and find all the areas so that um, I can just get it done all at once. So okay. starting here, this is a, a triangle here. So one half base times height. This is one half two times one. So two times one half is one below the x-axis, so negative one. Uh, here, this is a semicircle, one half pi r squared, one half pi r squared. Um, so 
four divided by two is two. This is this whole thing is two pi, but it's below the x axis. I'll just say negative pi and negative pi in case I need to break it up. And then one half base times height. This whole triangle is one, two, three, four, four times two, eight, eight divided by two is four. If I split four into two triangles here, I can break it up into two and two. Two, just negative two pi. Yeah. Okay. And G negative four, so G four equals negative four, or negative two, negative four. So then negative two. Oh wait, they so all flip it. Yeah. The order doesn't seem right. So we always follow the definition first, and once we get that definition written down, we got to decide, OK, is this, do we prefer to go in this direction? This is, this is going backwards here. Go from prefer to go from smaller to larger. So yeah, let's flip it and change the sign. So this piece here is negative one. Negative one times negative times negative one is positive one. Two to six, so it would be negative pi plus negative pi plus four. Mm -hmm. So negative two pi plus four. Yeah. And G prime four equals D with DX. G four of Do you plug in, do you write out the equals F of X but plug in this or there too? That's what I do. Yeah. G prime of four equals F of four. Oh, you don't have to write the whole D over DX. No, I mean once we have the once we have it defined, we can just jump directly to what okay. we know to be true. Uh, yeah, f of negative two, which is zero, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, five. 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 Um, derivative is the same thing as slope, but. Oh, so why? Difference? It's um, f prime of five. So f prime of f prime of the five is here. How would I find the slope at this point? Uh, so b five. I would just count. I think it's easier to count. 
just do rise over run down or I can just go from this point to this point since this point it looks like a one but I'm not I'm not sure these points are established I can just go down two over two okay. negative one So create your yeah, create your slope sign line. So anything above the x-axis is positive slope. This is my G prime graph. User x-axis. Mm -hmm. Vertical points. So negative four to negative four negative two is decreasing. Negative two to two is decreasing. Mm -hmm. two to yes, three. All below the x-axis and the final piece is above. Yeah. The at x equals increasing when g prime of x is greater than two. Just look at the arrows, right? Between two and six. Oh, I have four and I have two. Mm -hmm. two. 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 That's why they changed direction, right? Right. So just two. Um, I guess four, two, and six. So these are not going to be the same points as relative max relative min. Remember, off of the G prime graph, our relative max and relative mins will be the points oh. of inflection. Uh, yeah, you're right. Negative four and six will still be your your bounds. Yeah, but we'll just create a second derivative sign line, and we can pull the POIs from the sign line. One more. Yeah. Actually, there there's a duplicate here. It looks like negative two is both a, a x intercept and a rel and a relative max. Right, so we're going to include that as well. And then once you create your sign line with your three critical points, then look at the slope, right? The slope of the derivative graph will tell you concavity. Right, so this is concave up. Negative slope is concave down. Positive slope is concave up. Negative slope is concave down. So it's tested. 
Hmm? With the test. The That's right. Now uh, for part J, right? So what points will we want to test? Don't pull it off the F double prime, pull it off the F prime. The F prime is going to tell you where the potential relative max relative mins are. Mm -hmm. Remember, we had a, if we do EVT, we got to test what? Critical oh, okay. points and then points. So, right. <clears throat> and then they all get plugged into the original function. You you may have some that you can reuse from that you've already found. Looks like the only thing that we didn't that we don't have from before is g of negative two. Well, actually we don't we we don't need g of two. Okay, so we have g of two, we have g of negative four, we have g of six. So everything that we need is in front of us here. And then without, a, I mean, I know you get to use a calculator, but pretend like you didn't have a calculator. You can estimate pi and replace what in for pi? Three. Three, yeah. So this is negative six. This is one. This is negative six plus four, which is negative two. And then comparing those three numbers, negative six will be your lowest of those y values, right? So absolute min is negative two pi. and you don't have to worry about the X. Just tell me what the Y values are. And absolute max is one. X max value is one. Good. And then you want to try the Riemann sums problem, table of values on a that five, page five, try that. Do you have to actually use the um, little the bound piece? Oh, from zero to twenty. Yes, because six trapezoids, so we got to make sure that we span from one into the other. So, but then when you like. You're finding the half one. You don't have to put like that in front of anything, right? Because that's oh, right, right, right. So those, that's right. Those drop out. Right. I'm going to um, specify something uh, about, uh, especially, oh, maybe we'll get to it today, is that anytime you take an integral or derivative, your units will change. Right? So velocity is meters per second, but the integral of velocity is going to just be meters. I want to keep reminding us that when you do integral, think area, right? And when you do area, you multiply. And when you multiply, you're also multiplying units as well. So meters per second times seconds is going to be meters. So anytime if you're struggling with your units, if you see integral notation, just think, okay, I got to multiply these together. If I multiply these together, that's the units that I should be talking about. Okay. Yeah. Acceleration is squared. Acceleration is the slope. So it's it's going to be 
this divided by this. So it's meet. So in this case, a meter per second divided by seconds. So uh, slope, you're dividing the units. Area, you're multiplying the units. Or sorry, integral, you're multiplying the units. Then derivative, you're dividing the units. So what this means in terms of words is that um, between zero and 20 seconds, this sprinter has made, um, has covered a distance of 155.5 meters in that 20 second um, interval. I think I'm good on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Like that needs up. Mm -hmm. Good. For, for being, you just on average velocity. Yeah, average velocity. So, so it's just valley theorem. Speed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. If anything were to ask for average acceleration, would that ever ask? It would, yeah. Average acceleration would just be the slope of velocity, change in velocity over change in time. Okay, so you wouldn't use that? Um, yeah, uh, let's say if it was asking for average velocity between 17 and 20 seconds, then you would just do 7.5 minus 8 divided by 20 minus 17. It's just the slope okay. of velocity. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want, you can try a morning review problem that I'm saving for Friday, but this is just. Yeah, this one. Taking this exam, I have to remember like it's in radians. Oh, you're you're always in radians. You're never in degrees. I don't know, no, but like it mine like automatically. It goes to degrees. Up. It doesn't it doesn't go to uh uh radians to begin with. No, it's always in normal. Oh. Normal is fine. It's this. You see that radian? Radian versus degree. That's what we want. We want mm -hmm. the radius. Wait, is it highlights? It's going to be anyway. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. just going to. But, you know, sometimes some students have degrees highlighted. Mm -hmm. that, of course, you know, it only matters if it's trig, but mm -hmm. still, we just always say, just leave it always in radian mode. Don't yeah. put in degrees. Yeah. So, you want to try page 11? This is for Friday, but it just has all the, it has all the particle motion stuff in it. I'll get into the y. Mm -hmm. X cosine pi x over six. And then do zoom six so you can kind of see where that graph is headed. But there is something we need to adjust for. It says from 0 to 11, but your zoom 6 is only going to show from negative 10 to 10. So maybe we can adjust it so that let's go from like negative 1 to 12. 
I just like to, you know, especially if they give me bounds, I'm always going to uh, go slightly past it on e on both ends, so I can just so it, it just feels like I'm not trying to I'm not missing something at the edge of my graph. Hit graph again. So this one's pretty good. Yeah. But let's say um, the the bottom is getting cut off. So if it's getting cut off, you can just go to the window and just push your Y min further down to like negative 15 or negative 20. Right, so you, you can always play with these four numbers to kind of push and pull on the window. OK, so um, it says create a sign line for velocity and acceleration. So. Um, uh, let's do a uh, velocity first. So velocity, this is the velocity function. So we know that X intercepts is what we're after. So I'm going to do second trace. Zero. So I'll pick a point to the left of my first X intercept. Hit enter. Then scroll to the other side of my X intercept. Hit enter. Hit enter a third time. So three is my first X intercept. You can ignore it. That's just a zero, right? Okay, so here's the beginning of my velocity sign line. I'm going to find my next X intercept. which is here. So I'm just going to get close to it on the left side of it. Hit enter. Scroll to the other side. Hit enter again. Nine. Okay, so here's my sign line here. Um, my velocity is clearly above the X axis to begin with. So positive velocity. From zero to three, from three to nine, negative velocity. From 9 to 11, positive velocity. Now, acceleration is my peaks and valleys, right? It's basically asking for a point of inflection. So if I want to get to the peak, I need to find my um, x value here. And then if I want to find the valley, I need to find my x value here. So to do that, we have another feature, which is second trace, minimum and maximum. So let's find the maximum first because we see uh, a relative maximum on the graph there. So I'll choose four. So here I'm going to try to make sure that I pick a point that is left of my relative max. I'll make sure that, so I'll pick somewhere here, hit enter. And then I'm going to make sure I go to the other side of my relative max. Hit enter. And now it's going to try to find that relative max for me. Okay, 1.643. Next up, I'll find my relative minimum. So do second trace. <clears throat> three minimum. I'll pick a point to the left of my relative minimum, hit enter. Pick a point to the right of my relative minimum, hit enter. Hit enter a third time. 6.542. So acceleration is the slope of velocity. So positive slope on my velocity means positive velocity, positive acceleration. Negative slope, negative acceleration, positive slope. Okay. So it's kind of like concavity, right? Positive slope, concave up, negative slope, concave down. All right. Okay, find the times when the object is motionless. Okay. We have everything that we need here, three and nine.
FRC, find the velocity of the object. So go back to your home screen. We can do um, alpha trace, option one. If you're using older calculator, you can do minus y bars. Parentheses four, right? Acceleration, you know acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so you'll do math eight and derive on your velocity. Yeah, did you help me with that or what? The plugging in like plugging the in. Y. Right. So uh I'll leave that on the board. There's VARs, Y bars, function, Y ones. So that's VARs, Y bars. Function parentheses or parentheses uh, or sign. So you I'll try that. You try um, um, typing that in, see if that see if that makes sense. But I'll leave this up on the board. That's the other side. And then next up um, is acceleration. Acceleration is uh, derivative. So you're going to hit math eight and derivative. And then the function y1 after and then comma x comma four. Is the object speed increasing or decreasing? So compare velocity acceleration, and they're both negative, so speed is increasing. Total displacement is just the depth integral of velocity. So math nine. <clears throat> so it's okay to have negative displacement. That just means that um, you you ended up ten units to the left of where you started. So it means. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. there's ABSY. Oh, right. So your Ashley Valley, I'll have a little board here. It's math number ABS. And then when you find your function, make sure you close the parentheses there before you move on to complex. Do you have the 36 Pro? I do, but I'm using this okay. right now. But do you, do you have one? On yeah. You? Okay. It's still really good for graphing, but if you want to see that math thread, this calculator would pass you. So if you want to do a derivative notation, you can do second element, and it's just 
has digit type of the function. Okay. okay. It's harder to store it, but you can type if yeah. you use that. I did it before, it just took like forever to go. Got it. So, okay. Good. So, you're okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the second interval is here. Uh, and your absolute value is still under. It's still okay. under the, okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, yeah. guys. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. See you later. later. Hey, it was just average value here, right? Yeah, average value here, right? 